2019 and older leisure travel vans have an isolator solenoid for alternator charging. Okay, so we are here with a, what, what year is this? 2016? 2019. With, uh, uh, hopefully there's an isolator solenoid under here, but, but we're going to have to remove the seat, which again is four. Uh, I think that's, these are 10 millimeter? They're either 10 or 11. 11 millimeter, uh, but let's check and make sure we've, we're dealing with an isolator solenoid because uh, I want to install a house to start chassis battery charger on an isolator solenoid and there she blows we, we've got it so uh, we're going to remove the seat and show you how to install a house to start on an isolator solenoid for chassis battery charging Okay, so we pull the vinyl off, now we take our cover off, and here we have the isolator solenoid, shazam! Now what an isolator solenoid does is it's basically an electric switch that when the ignition, this is the ignition wire, when the ignition uh, turns on, there's a little delay from this device, it's called an uh, isolator delay relay. There's like a 20-30 you know, second delay to make sure that the engine started up and then it sends power and it closes. This is a big ele electrical switch and then it closes the switch and makes the circuit. This is the house battery side to the chassis battery. So basically it joins the house battery to the chassis battery so when you're driving the alternator is not only charging the chassis battery but it's also charging the house battery and this typically uh, charges at around 60 to 80 amps max uh, so that's why you didn't really need to change it when you did your lithium upgrade because you know you can get as much as 100 amps from the Mercedes alternator. So the fact that this limits itself to about 60, 60 to 80 amps, mm -hmm. it's fine. I disconnected the battery over by the. By the by oh the yeah, you didn't have to, but oh. that's good. Good. I didn't know yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I usually work on it hot, but um, but that's great. No I can problem. Put it back in if you want it. No, in. no, it's fine. Um, okay, so what we are going to be installing today is the house to start. And uh, the house to start comes it's just a little device like this, and they give you a little pack of, of connectors uh, and the instructions. I'll give you the instructions. You can keep that for your records. Okay, so what we're going to do uh, in a house to start is really easy uh, to install. And um, Rich already has lithium batteries, so we're basically going to leave the jumpers that come on this. These are jumpers, and you can have them in different configurations depending on, you know, what you're trying to do with your battery system. But uh, I like this. I like their default system because it, it doesn't. Uh, it charges the chassis battery, but doesn't, but not at the cost of running down the house battery. Um, and and at this configuration, this house to start begins charging when the house battery side starts putting out 13.6 volts, which is bulk charging of the house battery. So when this device sees that 13.6 volt, it turns on. And it is, this is a battery charger on its own, and it uh, charges your AGM chassis battery at the correct charging profile for an AGM battery, despite that the, you know, the voltage, the um, uh, battery charging that it's using is house bat lithium house battery, but it converts to the correct mm -hmm. AGM battery profile. So this is a really nice little device. We're going to put AG, or we're going to put a VHB tape on it and just simply stick it to the wall. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe, uh, yeah, I think I'll just stick it to the wall. I like to do that. Uh, then if you want to um, open up this little side panel and look in, you can look in and you'll be able to see the light. Um, I, oh, I could even put it over here um, so it would be easy. But I'll probably just put it, put it right there. Okay, then we have three wires. The yellow, it says right here on the front, the yellow is your house battery, 
the blue wire is the starter battery or the chassis battery and black of course is ground so what we're going to be doing is we're simply going to be loosening these terminals and uh, I'm going to put ring connectors on these and we're just going to slide them into place and retighten these and put the ground uh, to the ground bolt and we'll be off to the races so let's get started all right, I decided I'm going to put the house to start over here so when you open the little panel across from it, you can easily look inside and see the light if you need to see, you know, what, what the status is. So I'll push that on real good. Okay, so uh, we will do the ground, the ground wire last and it's just gonna go over here to this ground bolt and as I said before, the yellow is the house battery, so we're gonna put it on this. And I am not gonna remove that nut to risk, you know, dropping it or anything else, so I'm just gonna cut a section out of this ring. Uh, and I'm basically, I'm just gonna do the same to all the rings because all I'm doing is sliding it underneath the bolts or the yeah the bolt onto the bolts okay so let me get uh, all right I'm gonna use my it's this is uh, these are hot we haven't disconnected the battery but rich did disconnect the chassis battery um, but I'm using my little insulated um, socket wrench, so I don't really have to worry that I'm going to touch anything metal. So basically what I want to do is just loosen that, and I'm going to take the house battery wire, and I'm going to slide it under the washer. That's the key. You want to slide it under the washer, right on top of the existing lug, uh, lug on this cable. And then we're going to tighten it back. going to do this is the chassis battery side so we're going to do the same thing but with the blue wire for the chassis battery and again you want to get it right under that washer Okay, and we tighten it back up. I mean, this house to start is so easy to install, especially if you're dealing with an isolator solenoid, because you're just sliding it under. Okay, so then we want to tighten that back up, make sure it's really tight, nothing's moving. Okay, then last but not least, we have our ground. Uh, so let me get. Same thing here. We're simply going to loosen it. This is the basically a chassis ground bolt. Slide it under there, tighten it back up. And you can see that the House to start has already, the light's already come on and it's red. And what that red light means is we only, we have, we haven't gotten 13 point, uh, we don't have 13.6 volts of house battery charging yet. And it's because uh, Rich is parked here uh, at the Flamingos 
uh, Florida Flamingos Rally and um, he's plugged into shore power so his, his house battery is fully charged. So it's probably on float, which is 13.4, around 13.4 volts. So until this achieves, until this sees 13.6 volts on the house battery side, it will not switch to blue, which is bulk charging, and then green, which is float charging. So, uh, you know, that will probably happen uh, when a new charge cycle starts. Um, so... Um, there's nothing to worry about. That's going to work fine uh, when the house battery charging does start. I'm going to put a zip tie here, but we are essentially done. Uh, now all we need to do is uh, button the seat back up. You want me to plug the uh, ignition, the uh, yeah. thing back in? Thank yeah. You. On. said uh, now rich you just remember there's little tabs here you can feel them uh -huh. and that's this is what pops this panel off see oh, okay so when you push it down uh -huh. I don't know if you can see that Sharon but when you yeah. push it down then that pops off of this lip okay. and you pull the panel out okay so then you can you can just pull the panel out if you want to look at the house to start and then you just bend down here mm -hmm. and you see it see it lighted back there and you can look for red uh, the red blue or green oh, yeah, it's uh, right now. and then you know you know what it's doing yeah. but it you know it's really not something you have to monitor mm -hmm. um, you know unless you think you know unless you say to yourself I don't think I'm getting chassis battery charging so then you just pop this panel off so to to see what's going shunt. on yeah you should be yeah charging. absolutely you go on your shunt um no your shunt what do you you don't have anything monitoring your chassis battery voltage right yeah I do oh you do I think oh I think I do no, your Xantrex doesn't have any. But yeah, if you have a, a chassis battery voltage reader somewhere, you can easily tell. See right now, it's a, it's a 12. Oh, yeah. Smart Sense. Yeah, okay, so he has a smart Victron Smart Sense battery voltage reader on his chassis battery. So it's you're set, it's reading 12.7. So see, it's not being charged. So when this turns on, it's going to turn on at 13.6 volts. Okay. And that's what you'll see over on the chassis battery 13.6 volts charging and then it's going to go to float which is 13.4 volts okay. and and so basically if it's above 13 volts you know it's being charged yeah no. so that's good the solar up there should take care of that and the solar right any anything that's charging your house battery will be charging your chassis battery now so your solar uh, if you're plugged into shore power your inverter battery charger you know any you know either of those two things or both of them at the same time it doesn't really matter I mean charging is charging your chassis battery is going to be maintained mm -hmm. all right so let's get the seat back on and call it we call this a done <laughs>